Hello, it's Dom Michelle and welcome back to my channel. Today, I wanted to share with you all of the decks that are in my most used basket. So I talked recently in a video um, earlier this month about Tarot Overwhelm, how I often group my decks together in kind of categories. I kind of organize them, which helps me to kind of combat that um, decision paralysis when it comes to what decks that I want to work with. I have basket of decks just off camera here, which are my working decks. And those are almost always the ones that we see in my monthly reflection. So when I'm talking about the decks I worked with throughout the month, those are the ones that sit on my desk in a little basket here just off camera. But also, I have next to me um, on a little shelf in front of my window a little bookshelf with certain decks on them. Now I have a lot of special decks there. I have a lot of um, my big box oracles are there. But on top of that is this basket which holds all of my most used decks. So one of the things that I like to do is to keep the decks that I get into the most often for general things um, in a basket always at hand and they're kind of all grouped together so that when I come to my table and I'm like I need to do a reading and I want to do a reading with this that or the other or for this that or the other if I don't have something already in mind and I don't like have a specific theme that I'm trying to you know work with like I want to work with a moon deck or I want to work with a goddess deck or like this month I'm doing self-care in my membership so most of my decks that are sitting in my basket my daily basket are related to that work but if I come to my desk and I'm like I just I need to work with my cards for whatever reason in this basket is everything that I could ever need I think in just about every subject that I could ever want to do a reading on. So it's kind of handy to have just kind of a basket of favorites. These are like my write or die decks. These are like, if my house was burning, this is probably like, I'd just grab this basket and go, right? We love to torture each other with that question. And there's always the top 10, this, that, or the other decks. Like if you had to go away or if you could only have so many or whatever the case may be, right? So I thought I would share the decks that are in my most used basket because that kind of like answers all those questions all at once. These are my most used decks for every type of reading. These are like the quote unquote top decks in my collection. These are the ones that I would, you know, theoretically grab if my house was on fire. So beside all of that, like I think it's just really good to have a basket of decks of like decks that you can count on if that makes sense like if my whole deck collection were a grouping of friends right i would have acquaintances and co-workers and people like kind of know or people that i know through someone else or whatever this basket would be like my my inner circle this would be my little bubble of friends all here in this little basket so we're gonna take a look at my little bubble of tarot friends they're not all tarot, but we're gonna take a look at them anyway. Okay, so I'm gonna move that just off to the side and I'm just gonna start randomly grabbing out of this basket and we'll talk about each one and why I have them in here. So this is my Animals Divine Tarot. And just forewarning, like I have shown I think every single one of these decks on my channel at one point or another. Some of them I have full walkthroughs of, flip throughs, all that kind of stuff. These have shown up in many, many tags. Um, so I apologize for the repetition, but again, they show up frequently because these are the decks that are the most used in my collection most of the time. So this is the Animals Divine Tarot, and my apologies because this one is out of print, but I do love the mix of animal and um, celestial beings that we have or mythological beings that we have in this deck. So all of the minors are all animals. The courts and the majors are all people, essentially, right? But people that are like gods and goddesses or um, mythological, is that the right word? People. I love the associations. I love the fact that there is the um, title of the animal and the association as well as the title of the person. 
like bear for the nine of pentacles is perfect b for the seven of wands this to me is an animal deck done right in terms of the minor arcana associations but then we have the majors that have like that divine realm association and this deck for me is kind of wraps up like my spiritual practice or my spiritual belief system in a deck which i really really love because it has like that mundane earthy taurusy down in the everyday world energy through the animals but then we also get that divine connection through the majors and the courts so yeah it's it's a favorite like all of these are favorites this is going to be a video of me gushing about decks um like the two of cups with the otters like it's so good it's so good and it's on old Llewellyn cardstock which is even better okay so that's the animals divine tarot and that's the deck that I most often use for spiritual work let's talk about this deck here which is this the only one in a box oh there's one other one other in a box most of them are in bags which also tells you something about my um, association with a deck because most of the time if I really really love it I'm probably gonna make a bag for it the only reason I haven't made a bag for this one is because the box is lovely and it's a weird size <laughs> so this is the messages from the light meditation deck um, here's the backs and this is hands down my most used oracle deck in my entire collection i absolutely love the artwork but the thing about this deck is that it has really really succinct keywords and it goes with everything i really can throw this deck on the table with any other oracle or any other tarot in my collection and it just always seems to fit really well I really love the themes. I really love the keywords. And yeah, the artwork is just just stunning. By far, my most used Oracle deck because I use this for readings. I use this for meditation. I use this for path working. I use it for mindful moment pulls. There's just like, I don't know. There's nothing this little Oracle deck can't do. So yeah, I love it. That's the one that's on the box. I'm gonna try to move it along here because I had, do have quite a few decks and otherwise we'll be here for quite some time. So the second most used Oracle in my collection is this little one. And this is the Hedwich Botanical um, Oracle. Here's the box. And again, I absolutely love the artwork on this deck. It's got all this beautiful white space, which just creates this lovely, um, spacious kind of energy in a reading. It has really great, succinct keywords. And it just, again, is another one that I can throw down with just about any deck in my collection. Um, it, it even goes with like whether you're trying to pair it with modern or vintage decks, like it doesn't matter. And I think it's because it's very, very simple. It's very clean. It's very minimal. And there's a lot of white space. So it really does kind of resonate with whatever you pair next to it. I also really like the color um, pops of color in this deck because they do help me to tie into color across the other cards that I may be working with. Um, most of my oracles I don't use standalone. Most of the time I do pair them with tarot or I do kind of do them in larger readings. It's not, um, there's only a handful of oracle decks that I kind of just pull for daily card pulls or things like that or pull as a standalone so a lot of times I'm looking at my oracles through the lens of does it pair well with my tarot and this one again is another really great uh, very functional oracle deck in my collection my only complaint with it is that I wish there were more cards the next deck is my little uh, Rider Wheat Smith Centennial um, this is the 10 version which I have in one of Danny Mystic's bags this one is in order because I was do working with it in a video um, not too long ago on a, a series that I'm trying to create. Again, you've probably all seen this deck. This deck is my kind of go-to for uh, bedtime readings or if I'm traveling, it's like, it's kind of my standard go-to just when I need a mini deck. It's cute, it's an easy read, it's simple for me to work with. I know we've all seen it a million times. I toss the tin and put it in a little bag because that works better for me. So I'll, we won't dwell too long on this one because I know everyone has seen it. So the next deck will be no surprise to anybody who's watched my videos. Um, this is the Gentle Tarot. This is the Linen Edition. I absolutely love this edition. I talked about this in a recent tag, I think it was last month maybe, where this is an example of like my best shuffle. I absolutely love shuffling this deck. It is the right size for me. It's got a great linen cardstock. 
Okay, but really, it's not about that. It really, it's about the messages that I get with this deck. It is really comforting and supportive. It's so gentle and sweet, but it also has the ability to kind of call me out in a non-jarring way. So in a way that makes me go, okay, I, I see that there's something that I need to be working on there. And it kind of gives me a gentle nudge towards that. And sometimes you just need that. Sometimes you're just not in the frame of mind for a Barbara Walker kick in the butt. Sometimes you just need a little bit of a hand holding and a little bit of a gentle nudge toward the direction that you need to be heading. And this deck is fantastic for that. I have um, this version as well as the new tin version as well as a prototype of the tin version. Um, and it's a beautiful, beautiful deck. I use it quite often. Here's the gorgeous box. I have edged mine. I've probably edged most of these decks, to be honest with you. But again, this one is one that I just, I love to pull out whenever I just need a little, like, a little nurturing, a little hug. This is a great one. So the opposite end of that energy is my Hardy Tarot. I love the Hardy Tarot. Like, this, this is, yeah, one of my favorite decks. I, I mean, I probably shouldn't say that because this is like a basket of favorite decks, right? <laughs> They're all my favorites. That's the whole point of the video. Um, I love this deck. I love the way it has a lot of Thoth influence. There's a little bit of Rider Waite Smith as well in there, um, particularly in the courts, but it's very, very Thothy. And it's kind of like a little bit more of a modern Thoth, or in my opinion, a little bit more of an approachable Thoth. Um, it does not have Thoth keywords, so if that's something that tends to trip you up, this might be a good alternative if you like the kind of theme or structure that we see in the Thoth tarot. Love this Queen of Discs. There's just so many good, good things going on in this deck. I love the colors. I love the art style. It's like... And it is kind of a little bit funky here and there, but that just is so endearing to me. It's so... It's just part of its charm. So yeah, love, love this deck. Sorry, nudity. <laughs> there might be nudity in these decks. I have edged mine in this green color um, to kind of match that green in the center because, you know, that's important, right? So the next deck is probably my oldest favorite deck. Um, and this is the Green Witch Tarot. I was trying to think if there's another deck that I would consider like in a favorite that is older than this one. The only exception might be the Steampunk Tarot by Barbara Moore. Um, I absolutely love that deck and it is one of my oldest decks, but it's not one that I would that I have in this basket because it's not one that I use year round. Um, but anyway, that's neither here nor there. I don't know why I went down that rabbit hole. Here's the Green Witch Tarot. I again have edged mine. Can you even see it? I love this deck. This deck is like the world I want to run away to. And I've mentioned it many, many times. This deck to me is like coming home. It is like the stepping into a community that you've been gone for a long time, but like everybody welcomes you with open arms and they all know you. And like you can pick up conversations from where you left off and it's like you were never gone at all. There's just something so magical and comforting and supporting about this deck, but it does feel very community driven. So again, this is a deck that I actually use a lot when I'm feeling disconnected from um, like community in a larger sense or even community in my personal life, right? When I'm feeling disconnected from other people, a lot of times this will be a deck that I turn to for that to kind of see why that is. Um, because it is, it does feel like stepping into this world, this little village of people, and it helps me to kind of figure out what's going on and where do I need to make that connection. It's just a beautiful, solid reader for me. It's, again, a deck that I can use for just absolutely anything. Most of these decks are decks that I can use for absolutely anything. There's only a couple here that, like, I use for very specific practices. So um, that's kind of why they're in the favorites because they're they're multi-use for me. So the next deck is my Morgan Greer. I love this deck. This one's not been in my collection um, all that long. I do have multiple copies of it now. I have a vintage copy of it. I also have multiple copies of the Rider Waite Smith as well, but I have a vintage copy of this. I also have um, the 10 version, which often goes like on vacation with me and stuff. 
This deck to me, as I've mentioned many times before, like this is my paternal energy deck and it's just has that beautiful, wonderful, supportive, paternal, um, healthy masculine energy that is just wonderful. And it's very, it's a very clear, very solid reader. Uh, again, it's one that I can use for just absolutely anything. It's one that I often use for readings when I'm, um, working with things to do with extended family. So family beyond just my husband and my children. Um, this is a great deck for that. It reads very clear for me. It's a wonderful, uh, beautiful, colorful expression on the table, which I quite enjoy as well. And like these mustaches just like take me back to my childhood, like from the seventies. I mean, I was born in 78. So really like tail end of the 70s though, but in the 80s, most of the men in my family still had mustaches like that, including my dad, so I love it. It makes me think of that time in my life. It makes me think of my childhood, and it's just, yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful deck for that. Again, a really wonderful uh, reader for tapping into kind of just everyday sort of readings, and particularly if I'm looking for a little bit of that um, sort of positive masculine energy. I don't know how else to say that. I'm sure there's a, a more proper way to say it, but like a healthy masculine energy, this is a great deck for that for me. So the next deck is a fairly new oracle in my collection, and this is the Tree Whisper. I think this is the Secret Garden edition. And oh my goodness. I don't even know what to say about these trees that I haven't already said. They're beautiful. They have this gorgeous crone energy. There's an otherworldly, almost fey like feel to this deck. Um, this deck is currently out of print, but I do believe that Mags is doing a reprint. Um, I will leave a link for that in the description box below. I mean, there'll be links for all of these decks. And if it's still available for pre-order, um, hopefully it will be by the time I get this video out to you all. But it's just, it's such a fantastic reader. It has really great keywords. And again, this is another deck that I use when I'm lacking connection. Um, but it does really work for just any type of kind of guidance and sort of... Um, there's a bit of crone energy. Did I already say that? That's how this deck feels to me. Like there's crone energy here and it feels like when I need to tap into that, but I don't want people. I want more of the energy, more of the spirit of it, the nature of it. Then that's what I turn to this deck because it's just, yeah, it's beautiful. And there are like, there's faces in there that you can tap into as well. Can you see that? Beautiful. I guess I could pull it in. <laughs> Can you see that? Now that I'm up close, can you see the um, the face and the energy there? And there's one there. There's one there. It's beautiful. And there's the backs of that beautiful deck. And again, another favorite oracle, a really solid reader. And then one that I can use for just about anything, but it, it feels really, again, tapping into that crone energy when I need that kind of guidance, oftentimes I will pull out this deck. So a pretty recent addition to my little basket here is my Heart of Fairies Oracle. And this one took me by surprise. Um, this is an out of print deck, so my apologies for that. Um, there's the backs. And I have the extra cards here on top. Yeah, this deck is, is interesting. It's, um, I have the other Brian Froud Fairies Oracle as well, but there is just something about the energy in this deck in particular that calls to me. There's something about it that just feels very tapped into the Fae, of course, but it also feels very tapped into heart space. And um, for me, that's an energy that I'm often trying to work with. It's an energy that I'm often trying to, to cultivate. And um, as, as I kind of like to joke, like the soft, squishy side of things, I'm, I'm often working on that and trying to engage with that and recognize that in my own life. And this deck really does work beautifully for that. As, as funny as it may seem, because it is a fey deck, but it has a totally different energy than the Brown Froud Fairies Oracle, which feels more like interacting with the fey. Like it's portals to the fey energy. Whereas this, even though it is fey energy, it feels more tapped into the heart space of fey. The not so much the trickster, trickster side of the Fae energy, but more of the 
loving, supportive side of the Fae energy, if that makes any sense. It's all subjective, right? It's all subjective. But I love pulling this deck out. I do actually use this one quite often, even though I just said I don't do this often. But I do use this particular deck um, quite often for pulling one card because there's a lot in the guidebook and I feel like one, just working with one of these cards is plenty. At a time, I did edge mine in a copper stamp is fun um yeah i feel like just one of these at a time is enough to like more than that and i've got there's too much energy on my table so i like to just pull one get into the guidebook and yeah get that little bit of face support i keep showing the bags like it's gonna tell you anything about the deck um that's the heart of fairies oracle so the next deck is the Tower to St. Croix, and this is the newer second edition or the borderless edition. I don't think it's called second. I think it's the borderless edition. And I do have the first edition with the orange borders, which I do still quite love, but there is a printing issue on one of mine, so I swapped it out for this one. Um, I do love this deck. This is one of my most used decks for kind of sussing out my personal path. So be it spiritual, creative, um, life purpose, what do I need to do today? Like it, this deck kind of covers it all for me. I can pull this deck out for any of those kind of readings. Um, but it's definitely a deck that for me feels very tapped into, uh, advice. So it's, it doesn't read predictive for me. It reads more like, um, getting advice for a particular path that I'm on. And for whatever reason, that's very much my association with this deck. It's like, where do I need to go from here? That's kind of how it works for me, um, which is probably just because that's how I've primarily worked with it. I use it a lot for kind of looking at where I'm at on my personal path. I did a whole video on it. I spoke about this card in particular because I have a whole spread that is based on this card. I'll try to remember to link that in the description box for you. I absolutely love it. It just has a great energy. It has such a range of um, ideas and cultures and beliefs represented that it kind of encompasses the, the whole of the human experience. I think this Knight of Wands is amazing. One of my favorite cards in the deck. Knight of Pentacles, not so much. This Nine of Wands, one of my favorite cards in the deck. It's just, just gorgeous. So yeah, I use this one all the time. So that one is the Tarot de St. Croix. I've edged mine in black. There's the back. I also quite enjoy the guidebook and I do keep it in the, um, in the bag with it. And that's not something I do often. So that probably says something about uh, how I feel about the guidebook because it hangs out in the bag and I made a bag specifically to hold the guidebook. Um, it does come in a nice box and that's cool too. The box is great, nothing wrong with it. I just like to make bags for my decks. So the next deck is my Future Ancestor Tarot. And this is another one that the little guidebook lives in the bag because it is so good. I love it. Um, here's the box of this one. I have edged mine in gray. This is my healing deck. This is like my go-to. I need some sort of support and I need to work on some aspect of healing self. So not necessarily like healing in a physical sense, but healing in a emotional or mental or spiritual kind of a sense. It's really not a deck of, of um, physical healing for me. That's I have other decks for that. This one is more in those other realms. There's something about the artwork that's just so soothing and supportive. Um, it's a very understated deck, I think. And the messages in the little, the little fold-out really do add a whole nother layer to this deck. Um, when you add that in with this charming little artwork that we have that is like borders on the childlike, but is not. Um, it, it's just simple. It's quiet. That's the word I'm looking for. This deck is very quiet. And it's, it's a beautiful kind of um, quiet, nurturing, unintrusive reader for me. 
like it's even quieter than the gentle tarot it might even be a little bit more gentle than the gentle tarot which is quite interesting because um, it's just it has this very like mindful type of an energy to it i love this high priestess and it's one that i've done a lot of work with and it tends to be one that i pull out for like i can do any kind of reading with it but it's definitely a deck that i tend to pull out for when i need to do some sort of healing work it's also a deck that I pull out a lot when I'm just trying to do, um, I love this tower card. It's one of my favorites in the deck. It's also a deck that I tend to pull out when I am trying to do a, a mindful moment pull where I just, I need to take a, a break from everything. I just need to take a step back. Uh, this is often one of the decks that I will go to, um, not only for the beautiful imagery, but because it is a fantastic shuffle and sometimes even just shuffling a deck is enough to kind of help me get me out of whatever space that I'm feeling a bit of overwhelm about and I can kind of get into a better, better state of mind. But let's shift gears to two totally different energies. Um, this is my Black Lily Tarot, and this is my I Need a Kick in the Butt deck. This, this deck I call my Inner Truth Teller. I've mentioned it many times. I've talked about it in that sense many, many times. It's often the deck that I go to when I need like the harsh truth, and I know I need a butt kicking because I know this deck will give it to me, and it will tell me exactly like it is whether I want to hear it or not, but it's almost always a message that I need to hear. So it's quite pigeoned into that type of an, type of an energy and that type of a work, but I do use it quite often because apparently I need a kick in the butt quite often to be like, usually get out of your own head or get out of your own way and here's what's really kind of going on and get your crap together lady and move on right <laughs> that's what this deck this deck does for me and i need that quite often so it's it's an often used deck in my collection here's the beautiful backs it's also a wonderful shuffle it's just a great little deck um, I haven't been mentioning whether they are indie or not, but I will definitely link it for you below. So yeah, great one for kicking my butt when I need it. So a little recent addition to my basket, but not a new deck to me. Um, this is my Nicoletta Ciccoli, and this is my unmodified version. So I do have a modified version where I like I did a whole thing. Not only did I trim it, but I also like made a whole journal. I created um, all new associations for the cards and it was a really, really wonderful experience. It was totally based on the dream that I had with this card. I think I talked about that in the, that video. Um, this deck, however, is, I kind of call it my wounded inner child deck, which sounds terrible, but it's the deck that I go to when I need to connect with that inner child of self, which is a energy and work that I, you know, in all honesty, struggle with. And so I have um, purchased a second copy of this to have it back in its original configuration to do some work with it along with its original tarot association. So with the version that I made, I tend to read that one more intuitively because I took all of the titles off. And while I did create tarot associations for myself, I do often read it just more intuitively. And so I wanted to be able to work with this deck and this imagery um, along with the tarot. So like this is my two of swords, I'm pretty sure. Some of them stayed the same, but so it's interesting because now I have kind of all these different layers that I work with um, with this deck and it's been a really interesting experience to work with it back again in its kind of full configuration. Um, I do really, really love this deck, but it's definitely a deck that I have to kind of be in, in the space for. And the reason that it's in my favorites basket I guess this one's kind of a cheat because while it is a favorite deck in my collection, it's not one of my most used decks. Um, it is my most used deck for that particular type of work, but it's not a most used deck in my collection. It's just honestly in this basket to remind me to continue to do this work because it's hard work for me and it's not always work that I want to do. And so I have a tendency to put it off and like do other things. So it's in here so that I remind myself that this is important to me and I wanna be working on it. And so I've got the deck in here to remind me to do that. All right, so calming things down a little bit, we have my Northern Animal Tarot. This is 
one of my favorite decks. I featured it in my Good Moods decks. Here's the back. Um, this is the Imperfect or I'm Perfect edition. I, again, still no idea why it's imperfect. Um, it has different colored backs. I don't know if the other editions do, but I love it. Um, I did re-corner round mine with the large corner rounder, and I edged it so it's a little bit different. Um, and this is, I think, the first edition on the thinner, more flimsy cardstock, which... I love, I love the way this deck shuffles. There's just something about this artwork that like, yeah, it's totally a good mood deck for me, but it's also like a comfort deck. It's one that I do tend to pull out when I'm like kind of feeling a little pissy about things and I'm like feeling a little jaded about life or the world or what have you. Um, I will pull this deck out and just do really simple reading or even sometimes just shuffle it and look through it because that's that's good fun too. Um, but this is a deck that just it, it gets used a lot just for any type of reading as well but it's also a deck that I tend to pull when I'm not in the greatest frame of mind because it makes me happy and I enjoy it and like just disappearing into this little animal world which is funny because animal decks really aren't my thing um and the last two decks are animal decks so that's kind of funny but they're both um anthropomorphized animals I think that's the correct term so maybe that's the key maybe that's the difference I it's like stepping into a storybook there's something very innocent and playful and wonderful about this deck and I could just gush about all of these decks all day long but we'd be here forever if I did so I won't. So the last one probably won't be a surprise. Now technically this one doesn't live in the basket because my basket's kind of overflowing so it sits next to the basket on the shelf but it's still like basket adjacent so I'm gonna include it. This is the Tarot of Curious Creatures and I spoke about this deck quite a bit last month. I really didn't think I was gonna like this deck but I kind of love it. Um, I did watch a video recently by um, Sandy at Exploring Tarot and she did mention um, how there could have been instances of body diversity in this deck and I do full full wholeheartedly agree with that. Like a panda should be you know a big chunky bear and there was like she mentioned the polar bear and things like that but that aside for what this deck is it's fantastic and I I've used it I still to this day even from the time that I made that video last month or one or two videos that I made featuring this deck last month I'm still using this deck I'm still pulling it out um not every single day this month in September because I've got a little bit of a different energy going on for my work this month but again similar to the northern animal tarot I I am pulling it out whenever I feel like I just need a little bit of a, a mood boost or if I, as I mentioned in my three card uh, video, when I need to see the humor or the lighter side of a situation, although this strength card, oh my goodness, can we just stop for a minute and appreciate this strength card? Because it's so freaking adorable. I love it. But most of these cards, they're not like adorable. They're funny. They make me giggle. And yeah, I just, I do appreciate the humor in this deck. It's a lot of fun. Like, I love those lovers. It's so weird. It's so quirky. And it does actually read really, really well. So yeah, I won't dwell on it too much. I love this Four of Swords. Oh, Okay, so there are several of them that I'm like, oh, that's super cute. Like, oh, super cute. I guess so get Alice in Wonderland vibes with that one for whatever reason. But most of them are just like, they make me laugh because, oh my goodness, what is going on in these cards? So yeah, uh, this is actually my only Chris Ann deck. Um, I've had them all. I've rehomed all of them except for this one. This one's my favorite. So yeah, beautiful High Priestess. All right, the last thing in this basket, which we'll talk about real quick, is my runes. Now, I don't do a ton of rune work anymore, or I haven't lately. Um, these are by, these are my little China plate runes, which I think is by F Forge of the Phoenix, or the Phoenix Forge, something like that. I, I apologize. I'll leave it linked for you in the description box below. They are beautiful. They are all handmade and... I absolutely love these runes. Now, I haven't been doing a ton of dedicated rune work, but I do keep these on hand because I do occasionally do castings for various things. Um, I do also sometimes use them 
in uh in my spiritual practice as well so i do have my little runes on hand the only other deck that i'm going to give um mention to is my little llewellyn because you're probably wondering where is my llewellyn tarot why is it not in my favorites basket and it's because it is right here have i shown this before so this is now oh my crystal slipped this is now the home of my little llewellyn tarot because it is always always on my table and always at hand i love this deck y'all know how i feel about this one it does still have its bag because when it travels with me i put it in its bag but the rest of the time it lives here on my table um, where it gets used all the time and it's got a special new home now with a little crystal and yeah that's how much i love that one Okay, so there you have it. That is my basket that I keep on hand of my most used tarot and oracle decks. As always, I'll have links for everything that I showed here in the description box below for you. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to sharing with you again soon.